Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast today, where with the fourth episode, today we're talking to Oscar Pont. He's a French architect and carpenter living in Brazil, um, and he's a very avid bamboo ambassador. That's why we're talking to him. Hello, Oscar. Hello, Dizzy. How are you? I'm very fine. Thank you. How is everything? Uh, right now you're in uh, Bali, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm great. <laughs> Cool. It's very, uh, very amazing from Bamboo. It's very it's a place to be. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, Oscar, what can you um, tell us regarding your um, current um, bamboo um, project in Brazil? Okay, yeah, many things, many things. So, just for coming a little bit back before, like my background is like I studied architecture in Paris, so my reference were primary what I have seen in Europe, like concrete, steel, stone, a little bit of, of wood. And not so, a lot of yeah. bamboo at all. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then the, I I was traveling in, in Asia. So my mind started to open a little bit about the like the potential of bamboo. And yeah, so after I I'm living in Brazil and I did some course for sustainability, like architecture and sustainability. Mm -hmm. And where I discovered like bamboo. For me, for like uh, thinking about bamboo and yeah. So I start to, uh, to, to find client. I, 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 I get very excited by bamboo and I want to experiment and do it in bamboo. So it was two, three years ago, two years ago, but I didn't find bamboo around me. So, <laughs> and that was like, in Brazil uh, already. Or... Yeah, yeah, that was Brazil. So we have all the good condition. Like I'm living in Salvador in Bahia, mm -hmm. and we have a uh, all the good condition of a tropical country for for grow bamboo, but no bamboo. They only have the they have uh, the bamboo vulgaris. No, so that's the Bulgaris. worst one. Yeah, that's the one that doesn't yeah, really... Yeah, which is like the, the Portuguese import in, in Brazil for doing uh, cellulose, cellulose, which is like paper, you know. But after the... Just, uh, yeah. So we only have this one, and it was quite uh, challenging for me to find a provider for bamboo, find people in Rio, Sao Paulo, but it's like 3,000 uh, kilometers from Salvador. Wow, so that's... it was very expensive and like, yeah. It was uh, so I get frustrated. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Let's learn how to grow bamboo, how to plant bamboo. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I got to land, and uh, I start to yes to do a lot about plantation and also like I before I I did some course of permaculture. So I wanted really okay, how can I yeah how can I and I grow bamboo of the best way, and not do only like. Um, monoculture like only bamboo but grow around other polycultures and mix yeah. different crops together adding exactly. value to the crops like bamboo yeah. being shade and creating better soil and stuff like that yeah yeah, that's yeah exactly the way to go and especially because in brazil we have like cacao and coffee which is two crops who like uh shadow shade so yeah yeah shadow. Yeah, yeah. Shade, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah i study a lot uh a little bit that so my other difficulty was okay how to how to find seedling of bamboo because i don't have a room yeah. so yeah i i meet some association in salvador and they they tell me oh we know a japanese community like in, near in the forest japanese so you can go yeah because the, the japanese community they arrived like 50 years ago in brazil they immigrate Mm. And they, they they bring with them seedling of, of dendrocalamus aspect, which is wow. for <laughs> because they they wanted to eat in Brazil bamboo. The, the bamboo <laughs> shots, yeah. But because exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. So that's... so I, I, I got from them some bamboo and after I find another farmer which like have like 20 seedling of dendrocalamus aspect and they was doing nothing with so i pay them say can you do more seedling for me and i will so i order like 400 seedling of dendrocalamus wow. and in mean yeah and meanwhile i also buy some seeds because i know like i, I can't have too many of the same dna i have to to Absolutely. have more diversity 
Yeah. And also uh, from bamboo, I wanted to have like a medium, medium range, high range of bamboo, like for the diameter, not only like big bamboo. I wanted bamboo. So not only cut. giant bamboo, yeah. which is then Rucalamus asper, but also, so you're using exactly. also um, uh, Guadua angustifolia, probably? Or... So uh, that's a funny story. So, okay. so, so I, I go to Colombia, I, 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 I use a little bit Guadua, it was very nice, but in Brazil, we don't have the culture of Guadua. We have, it's a natural bamboo from Brazil also, because it's like in Amazonia, in mm -hmm. the forest, we have a lot of Guadua. But because of the thing, uh, the needles, <laughs> you know, Guadua is have a big needles. Ah, the thorns, uh, yes, yes. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. it depends what Guadua, because some yeah. Guadua have, other have none. <laughs> yeah, but the one we have is the Angustifolia cum Guadua, which have a lot. And in Brazil, it's already complicated to find the like uh, workers for work with bamboo. Yeah, nobody so wants to I touch prefer... it because of the thorns, probably. I, I prefer start with like uh, bamboo. We, we are not invasive and like easy to manage, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was my idea. So I, I, I grew up like some seeds of uh, bambuza solida, etulda, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is like a medium branch and cool. very strong bamboo. And yeah, so now I succeed to plant almost everything, but I'm like uh, always trying to do new seedlings for preparing for expand. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, my idea is like, uh, I have a, a, a land with like two hectares or I, where I can plant. Mm -hmm. And now like I, I want to prepare for plant more because like with two hectares, it's very nice for experiment. Yeah, It's like for, for the first tape, but yeah, ideally I want expand. to plant like, yeah, I want to plant like one product test. It's like the, okay. my main goal, let's say the five years. But it's... yeah, like now I know a little bit more the cost, all the problem I got, now I, I know how to... Uh, so to we like, could say your yeah. goal is in five years to reforest with a hundred hectares on like a variation of different bamboos, which you know grow within that yeah. time in Brazil, in the El Salvador state. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So, and also like, I don't want to like buy one of hectare and plant by myself. I want to incentive other farmers show like, okay, bamboo is a potential. Also for, because many farmers have a lot of hectares and they have 20%, it's like degraded soil or it's like, I don't know, too close to the river and they do nothing with. Mm -hmm. So they can add value to their land and also like you have uh, other revenue. So, Good idea. Yeah, so you want to help improve the soil quality and the value basically of their land by having them plant the bamboo where they have like places within their soil yeah. which they can't use because of erosion or low quality because nothing exactly grows because it's already yeah so you want to regenerate that with bamboo that's a very good approach exactly yeah and also like i want to create a network of people we have bamboo because in near to salvador in Bahia we don't have so much people so you know help people to grow bamboo after i can buy the, their bamboo so it's like a good cycle for me also so that would be so, circular yeah. economy right Classic. exactly wow yeah. you're doing a lot of cool things there congrats very cool very yeah cool. yeah it's only the beginning but yeah it's a lot of potential absolutely i'll share then some photos uh, which you shared uh, with me regarding mm -hmm. the bamboo um we're gonna produce yeah. a blog article then um and um yeah um so um, we could talk also, um, so we talked about the giant bamboo, which you're using, um, mm -hmm. some middle-sized bamboo, which is bambusa solida. Um, yeah. Not the guadua, because mainly of the thorns is like much more of a challenge to harvest it and, and, and work with it. Um, and exactly. um, do you have um, also like um, projects you've, you've been working in Brazil with bamboo? Uh, where you can talk about experiences there or like uh, learnings yeah. maybe things you would do different in in future that's uh, interesting always yeah so yeah <laughs> so you know when you plant bamboo you have to be very patient because it's going fast but you have to wait five six years yes. so already i said okay what i'm do what i what i will do during these five six years 
So first, uh, I already focus on like uh, training people and like do some how to say uh, yeah. I do like some workshop for showing people what is bamboo, how to manage, how, it, how it's easy to grow, the possibility. So already people can, I, I see many people very interesting, you know, and it's also uh, for me, like uh, I can reach, reach some farmers, some other people who have land. So, okay, I, I want to plant bamboo because I don't do nothing with my land. And maybe, yeah, in five years I can be an economy with that. They're going to so, earn money yeah. with that, like harvesting it and it's endless crop, right? They harvest it, but it's yeah. not like cutting down everything because you just harvest the mature bamboo and it's ongoing. So it's everybody. Yeah, wins. <laughs> yeah exactly. And also like uh, during this workshop, I also like train people for doing uh, simple construction like pergola, like, um, yeah, little house or whatever, furniture. So people already... Done? Sorry, have yeah. you already done a project like that? That yeah. would be interesting if you can like share some images later with me. And uh, so we okay, can show, yeah. you know, so people really, because uh, we have to explain, there is like different style and steps of bamboo construction. They're like very simple one, which could be a pergola, yeah. a pergola for, let's say, a car park or just uh, outside mm -hmm. to exactly. you, which yeah. is a roof. Um, uh, it could be much more complex, like uh, the so well-known uh, bamboo um, school in bali or what's it called yeah. green school, which is yeah, like green school organic bali, yeah. and, and multi-layer and uh, but super complex you need a lot of manpower and material and uh, some knowledge for sure yeah <laughs> right yeah <laughs> but like yeah my goal is to start from the from like zero because like in brazil in my region we have Nothing. no craftsmanship in bamboo so you have to show to people to do the basic and after can mm. yeah uh, like level up you know but so, that's the way to go absolutely i mean you have to start uh, from scratch to... right exactly and also like the culture thing like in brazil they don't have any culture of bamboo like in colombia they have in mexico they have Not if in brazil. you look a little bit like costa rica guatemala mm -hmm. uh, in the north of brazil don't have this culture at that's all interesting that's interesting because yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's also that's why like bamboo in Brazil also it's like struggling a little bit. Yeah, like uh, well, not just there; it's struggling everywhere because there's still yeah, the yeah, misconception yeah. of bamboo being the poor man's timber. Like if you have no money, you will use bamboo. Like this is in Asia, also very still kind yeah. of a thing. <laughs> but I think like in, in comparison, like in, in Bali now, like you see all the new resort. Uh, in course. bamboo because it's a new wave you know like but true like yeah but if you go yet, and, and and check with yeah. the people you know local people um you yeah. still see that mindset where um us as european i mean we're both french by the way <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> so uh, but us as europeans we love bamboo because obviously it's something which is not endemic to europe uh so mm -hmm. it's, it's more attractive for us uh, beside all the amazing uh, things bamboo can do and does right but for local people it's like oh it grows in the in the back anyway so why should i care you know it's like with the fruits and all that stuff if we would have yeah. coconuts in in our garden here in europe we would think uh boring why should i get a coconut <laughs> but if once we get there and have coconut we're like yeah coconuts <laughs> yeah exactly that's that's yeah, natural it's, it's and it's going to take time for sure until people really realize the potential that um, they can achieve with bamboo um yeah yeah it's already happening because of the social media i think like it can be faster than expected but yeah also we have to plant like in europe many people starting to plant and but like it's yet the beginning it takes so maybe time. in five years yeah it takes time it takes time, it takes time. everything like, good takes time right <laughs> yeah yeah that's why we have to have a vision otherwise uh, yeah Absolutely. So basically, um, uh, what we have been talking uh, before uh, together is you're also looking for people who would be interested in uh, in contributing to your um, bamboo um, projects in Brazil, right? Yeah, because uh, I start the, the project uh, alone by myself with my own investment. And so I'm super happy how, how it's developing. But I feel like alone, it's Oh, very exhausting by the way but even like you can 
scale a lot alone. You have to find partnership, sponsorship, other people who share the same vision. Otherwise, you yeah, you you don't. Uh, I think like you have you are less powerful like with together with a bigger yeah. network. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, do you have like, like a fundraising page or something set up already? We could share later. Maybe? Um. Yeah. Later, maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I'm. I'm. I'm like. Uh, the website is in, in construction. Okay. So yeah, yeah. But we're gonna share uh, that. We're gonna, we're gonna mm -hmm. work on yeah. that. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> we're here to, yeah, because... to help, uh, mm -hmm. like, really get the the what's happening with cool. Bamboo worldwide and what you're doing in Brazil um, to yeah. really get interested people and in, learn about Bamboo and enable them to, if they want, like, collaborate, maybe go there or uh, if they have right. money they yeah. want to invest. I mean, there are always a lot of options to collaborate, right? It's not just only money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Yeah, especially in, in Brazil, it's interesting because uh, the main uh, crop growing in Brazil, like uh, if uh, the eucalyptus, mm -hmm. because they have like a governal help for growing eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. But like like near to Salvador, you have like 5,000 hectares of eucalyptus, like uh, in the same place, you know. But like people start to ask questions like, okay, after I cut all what happened, you know, and nothing happened, you know, the ground is like... And how's the soil you know, the... after that, right? It's yeah, like... Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, and people also are, now are looking like, can I plant bamboo after that? But is it, we don't have the same, I mean, we have the same law, but for like investment, if you go to the bank, it's more difficult with bamboo. Like uh, so, yeah. all is a difficult process, and maybe yeah, that's why I I, I want to find other way to uh, to find an investor. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a challenge I think everybody in the bamboo uh, universe has right now because there is still this misconception of bamboo being like a tree. It's not. It's grass. <laughs> so yeah. that's already yeah. the biggest. It's, it's uh, complete. Completely different, exactly. And um, yeah, government most of the times are not the fastest one like starting to think of uh, new ideas so um it's gonna take a time so probably you're better off uh, organizing yourself on the internet and really finding mm -hmm. like-minded people wanting to do good with bamboo yeah yeah i hope so <laughs> yeah absolutely um Anything else um, you would like to talk about um, regarding your bamboo experience? Yeah, I, I think something funny is like uh, every time when, when you start something new, you it's difficult to visualize what you what you do because you you, you don't know. So now I think like with two years of like I start to planting to order the seedling, and I think like it's very interesting to people follow the ID because like. You know, at the beginning, all, all, all people look at me like, what's this crazy uh, gringo doing, you know, planting bamboo, like for doing what? Uh, we, we burn bamboo, people say me around, like, we don't plant, we burn it. And so, like, it's very interesting to always try it. I think something I really like is experiment. Even if you have many problems, like, I have many stuff I didn't expect it, like, I have ants coming and like eating a 20 a seedling of bamboo like because or like they're uh, sweet we... they have sugar because they grow fast and the ants want energy which is sugar so yeah yeah or like we got many invasion of our land or, but yeah many stuff that's the for instance that people stole everything but bamboo they didn't stall because they think it was like uh, you know what not valuable that? i heard mm -hmm. the same story from a friend from guatemala he said yeah he planted everything and people stole everything, but not the bamboo. <laughs> so he kept <laughs> yeah. on planting bamboo. That's the same story here, right? Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, it, because in Latin America, people don't value bamboo. So Absolutely. it was a good thing. Like <laughs> I can let in the middle without no protection and no problem. No problem. <laughs> That's but good yeah, news. and I, yeah, at the end, like when you, you try and you be persistent, I think it's interesting because things happy and yeah so like not uh not uh how to say not letting go your what you your what you, vision your, your goal yeah yeah your goal yes 
Um, and what I thought is interesting too is that you're architect and carpenter, so you you really bring like the knowledge, um, how to build stuff, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, so I I am very like excited to to practice more uh, with bamboo, but like the the destiny bring me to plant first, but yeah, and especially because in uh, like. Everywhere we have a, we have a scar of sustainable or biosource material in construction, so or, and even for furniture, so bamboo can be a very great response for all of that. So that's that, that was my my starting point. Okay, like why people don't grow bamboo more because it's uh, yeah so fast in comparison to tree. Uh, yeah, so yeah, and my IG so for because I want to plant more bamboo. Because of that, I already study like in Colombia, like for doing a small manufacture, you have to have minimum, uh, let's say 50 hectares of bamboo to have like, let regenerate the bamboo, don't uh, harvest too much and start something. So, and we have, we have already in Brazil uh, demand, but we don't have like uh, people selling. So it's very funny. You go to every store, you have like furniture and bamboo, and very expensive from China. And so we said, but why don't you grow here? We have everything to do. So, yeah. But you're at the beginning, basically, and are yeah. looking at the long-term project, but you have the vision clear. And um, yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, let's see uh, on the future. On the future, I really want to, to also train more people for building in bamboo because we have a, like in Salvador, we are like 100 kilometers of coast and we can be many hotel or pause near the beach, like, like in Asia, like, uh, mm -hmm. and it can be very nice, I think, and more sustainable way to, to build also. So it's Absolutely. like, a, like you see, a, a cycle with uh, everyone win and it's like it's the nature also not, uh, it's not destroyed for that. Even even earthquake better for earthquakes, uh, the bamboo yeah. buildings, which are more resistant, more flexible. Um, all those skyscrapers and uh, concrete buildings are not really resistant for uh, earth earthquakes. That's another uh, interesting uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in Colombia, they are very like uh, they always research a lot about that. So they have already like four, five floor fully in bamboo, like fully resistant to earthquakes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah Colombia has also like I think four or five bamboo training centers from the state uh, um, which is uh, they have of course from the Eje Cafetero the coffee triangle mm -hmm. they have a lot of bamboo there I think and they're a natural occurring um, um, guadua but still uh, they mm -hmm. have uh, focused on, on bamboo a lot they also have a lot of challenges it's not that easy there either um, yeah, but um, yeah, every nation is really has a different environment regarding bamboo. Let's say political and economically speaking. Um, beside um the the very uh, climate, which is like tropical, uh, humid. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, bamboo would grow everywhere, right? But we have to plant it. <laughs> yeah, e even in France, like I see in France, like uh. People have misconception about oh, but we can we can grow bamboo in France. Like I, I was talking to people to bamboo logic, they were growing bamboo in Netherlands. So <laughs> why and not Portugal. in France? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Portugal growing like Italy, Portugal, mm -hmm. like the south of the France, even in Britain, in France, like yeah. people are growing bamboo. So yeah. yeah, I think it's more like like to say like have the vision and understood understand the potential of bamboo. Mm -hmm. for our economy and uh, also for the sustainability yeah yeah well it's it's i think it's such a big topic that it's it's still really that that one of the biggest challenges is the understanding the misconception of what it can do you know and what it mm -hmm. is so this is going to take time and it's really important that people like you and me talk about it and 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 yeah. make things with bamboo because talking is one thing making yeah. is the next step and that's really the important step. better absolutely mm -hmm. but it, and it's harder because you really have to take things in your yeah. hand and you have to uh, talking is easier most of the time <laughs>
Yeah, and you do more mistake when you do, yeah, <laughs> because many stuff happen you don't yeah. don't expect. So yeah, but that's a learning experience, which is super interesting. Exactly. Now also for people listening now, maybe I don't know if you have any other episodes uh, like regarding bamboo construction, or um, you want to share uh, regarding um, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Have you have you um, you've bought probably bamboo and you harvested bamboo yourself? Probably there have been some differences in the quality of bamboo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a difficult problem because like I have many clients. We now I plant bamboo, but I don't have bamboo ready. So many clients ask me, okay, let's buy bamboo, let's build. It's okay, but like if you come bamboo from Sao Paulo, you have to see before the quality, which is the provider, what, what how we treat the bamboo, how the transportation is gonna be for like you don't arrive and thirty percent are like a lot of fissuration, a lot of cracks. So all is like compl more complicated. That's why I want to have the control of the quality. I know I harvest, I, I can treat also. So mm -hmm. I control all the quality cycle. Yeah, it's the uh, full yeah. chain. You need to control mm -hmm. the full chain. It's just if there is, if mistakes are made in one of the steps of the chain, you will not be able to keep the quality at the end with the end result. Exactly. That's the yeah. yeah. And especially because bamboo, it's already like uh, organic material. So every bamboo are a little bit different. So it's already something uh, which can be difficult because people they expect, okay, I, I want to buy a 30 pole uh, colon of bamboo. They want the same. They, Sometimes they don't know, like, okay, you, you're going to have, like, a little curve. You, and, yeah, you have to explain. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's a part also of the beauty of bamboo. So all, every bamboo are a little bit different, so which is uh, aesthetically also interesting. And it makes it very unique at the end because no bamboo exactly. construction will be exactly as the other one, which is the added value yeah. if you look at it from that yeah. point of view. Yeah, for construction, I see a challenge for now. It's like, uh, it's about durability. Like people, uh, sometimes if you're in Asia, they have so much bamboo, like they know they're going to change every two, three, five years, they're going to change. You know, it's like you take care of your body, your mind, construction should be the same. Like every five years, they're going to change. Okay. But yeah, I think in, in Europe, we have the idea about like building in concrete, in stone. In steel, and we have more expected. Uh, we expect like, okay, for 30 years, we don't do nothing. It's going to be the same. Minimum. And it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit different. Yeah. And also I see like many people, many people do a super well uh, execution of the construction in bamboo, but they don't protect the bamboo. So the bamboo is gonna, not going to not gonna have too long uh, durability. Lifespan. Because so of the something... sun ray or the water or humidity, right? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, so um, that's a good point. That's, uh, I mean, you can have a great construction, but if you don't think long term how to protect the material, which is exactly. natural, organic, it's uh, not going to last. That's that easy. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and I see like a $1 million house in Brazil in bamboo where they don't protect the bamboo. I say like, what? But it's about like, because many people do bamboo and they are very good at, but they, I know it's all the process of conception also, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but also, but anyway, it's, it's another, but another it's a topic. Good point. But... It's a good point, actually. It's, it's the entire chain from the planting, harvesting, transforming to, in case of a construction, construction, right? If it's another added yeah. value, like let's say a, a, a chair or, or or even we do bamboo mm -hmm. or cotton. Yeah. Um. It it's the same story there too. Um. Which is um. Yeah. Why you really have to be very meticulous, um. In every exactly. working step. Yeah. Another thing we have like eight minutes left, which we talked mm -hmm. uh, briefly was um using bamboo in uh, polycultures regarding um agriculture. Yeah. Um, which is something you have been uh, testing also and had some uh, probably already experiences with it or mm -hmm. what can you maybe tell us <laughs> there? Okay, no, what, what I did from experimentation, so I plant a cafe, cacao, banana, and some uh, tapioca, what's tapioca? It's, it's um, tropic crops. Uh, yeah. yeah, tropic crops. 
But like I think for from my perspective, I will have in two years or three years maybe take off or replant you know, because bamboo gonna be bring too much shadow, mm -hmm. so too much shade. So yeah. that's why. The, but I see in Asia they plant like uh, bamboo and after they put some rice field and yeah, yeah. going the, quite well. But they don't plant a lot of bamboo. Like exactly. you have to do like a line and yeah. The thing is, we want shade, but not too much shade. So that's maybe yeah, exactly. for people who are not into agriculture, they don't know that. But a yeah. lot of sun is like it burns and, and, and the, the crop won't grow. And when there is too much shade, there is not enough sunlight, yeah. so it won't grow exactly. either. So like everything in life, we need a balance, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's very passionate for me because like you see how it's developing well, how the other can help also. How the like the leaf gonna go on the ground and I see some crop of bamboo like only the the, the leaf on the ground are already the a lack of other fertilizer for for the bamboo himself so it's yeah like a cycle or he succeed to sustain himself that's uh, another thing that the bamboo um, grows very fast topsoil because it produces so much leaves. That's very important for uh, polyculture agriculture. Normally, we don't have enough topsoil or really healthy soil to get the yeah. crops growing, and bamboo helps there. Of course, that's that's really worse. Even like else, you would have to buy soil, and there you have the yeah. bamboo producing it naturally. No, no, it's amazing. Yeah. And also the the leaf was a big one, which is like on the node of the bamboo. Mm -hmm. Like in Asia, they do many like um, plate. You know the this this carta uh, is in Portuguese. Sorry, it's a plate you can re, uh, just throw away after. Like uh, they use the leaf of the bamboo for mm -hmm. like for it's that. amazing. You can yeah. for in fast China food. they use yeah they use sample one hundred percent of the bamboo mm -hmm. for in every industry. Like mm -hmm. we don't have any waste. So. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that's the other thing I wanted to uh, um, tell here is actually, mm -hmm. uh, we, we've talked about that also previously, but the, the waste concept is uh, something human. In, in nature, there is no such thing as waste. Waste yeah. is just an unused resource. And that's really about it. We're not using the resources. Once we use all the resources, we have no more yeah. waste. And you're really contributing to that. So um, amazing amazing <laughs> yeah no I'm, I'm i'm always looking in construction also like how can we have no waste because like in front of my land i have like a factory of eucalypts which is not so good but <laughs> you have so much waste uh, waste of the like the skin uh, around the, the tree and it's before treated so this skin is valuable you can use for pot on the ground you can use for maybe do another material Mm -hmm. and they just throw away or burn it and i said no uh you can bring to my land and i will put to the ground and it's going to be like a fertilizer and like i will not it's going to be a soil like after with the rain in like six months you know mm -hmm. so but people say don't value like they just see waste and they're going to put on the on the side or burn it and that's all you know it's a mindset we really need a, a, a yeah. mindset shift into um seeing uh all the the useful resources we have around us being this eucalyptus waste or any other kind of waste which is available and and people see as issue but in reality it's it's something they can use <laughs> yeah it's like when people say to you oh bamboo it's invasive so, but if you manage bamboo and you use for everything it will be never invasive because you're gonna use it every time so it's not invasive Exactly. And also, it's easy to control. Like uh, you just, uh, you it's, just have to manage or to put, um, make a hole. You know, like you have to so, yeah. know your bamboo, and then you know how to manage it. Absolutely, and then it depends if it's a, a cold weather bamboo or a tropical bamboo. Which tropical bamboo normally is clumping bamboo, like the giant bamboo, mm -hmm. or yeah. semi clumping, like the guadua, which is clumping but grows a little bit every year. And uh, yeah. the other example, maybe, which most people think of when they think of bamboo is the typical Chinese mosso bamboo, which mm -hmm. is really a running bamboo, but it's it's cold weather, right? They have snow there where the pandas are. It's very different yeah, to Brazil. 
for example. Yeah, yeah, and and hey, also uh, it growing in the altitude. So like in Brazil, we have few mountain and hills, so it's not growing so well in Brazil at mm -hmm. some part of the south of Brazil. But yeah, mm -hmm. but it's also like even the the Chinese bamboo, uh, like the in China they plant only that and like they, they have a fully managed system, so they have no problem. This is only about like how you how you can manage and before like have a, a plan. Okay, I will plant here, I will control and yeah, like everything. Like if you do nothing with without plan, it's not gonna like, absolutely you need a plan for everything if you want to have success. That's that's a very good too. ending um <laughs> part here. <laughs> um yeah so um hey Oscar Thank you very much for your time, your interview. Um, yeah. I hope um, I'll, I will share all that information on the blog post. And um, let's see um, how you continue here. Um, this is mm -hmm. long term. So hopefully in yeah, uh, future, we keep in touch. <laughs> we'll have a, a next uh, podcast with you talking about all the wonderful things you're doing with the bamboo then. <laughs> yeah, with great pleasure. Fantastic. Take care. Have a good time. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks a lot, Gigi, for this interview. You're welcome. Bye, Oscar. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.